CrowdStrike has denied responsibility for Delta Airlines' $500 million in losses, claiming that the airline ignored offers of help and crafted a misleading narrative exacerbating the chaos. What was that Delta Airlines narrative that caused them to take significantly longer than their competitors to recover from the disruption caused by CrowdStrike's software update? Massive waves of Magnabur ransomware are now encrypting home users' devices globally and demanding ransoms as high as $5,000. As a home user, how can you protect yourself from falling victim to this ransomware? Chinese cyber espionage group Storm Bamboo has executed a sophisticated attack by compromising an ISP to poison DNS queries to deliver malware through seemingly legitimate software updates. And finally, researchers have uncovered a critical design flaw in Microsoft's Windows Smart App Control and Smart Screen, revealing that threat actors can gain initial access to environments without triggering any security warnings. You're listening to The Daily Decrypt. So you all remember that little CrowdStrike software update that took down what seemed to be half of the entire world's IT departments, right? Well, most notably, airlines were affected by this with thousands of flights being canceled or delayed. And it really shined a light on how crappy airline policies are and how underprepared they were for such an outage. And one of the major airlines that did less than stellar things during this outage was Delta. And of course, Delta is blaming CrowdStrike and CrowdStrike's software update for the thousands of flights that were canceled, the chaos that ensued that ultimately ended up in Delta losing $500 million. But CrowdStrike is striking back. They're claiming that Delta's creating a misleading narrative. According to CrowdStrike's lawyers, Delta ignored their offers for help and other airlines like United and American bounced back way quicker. So while over 8.5 million Windows devices worldwide got hit by this tech hiccup, Delta took days longer than others to recover. And CrowdStrike is essentially saying that they acted quickly, which we see that they did and offered assistance to all customers affected, which Delta did not accept. And I know a few people personally who were flying Delta on that day, who weren't treated very well. You know, they weren't provided meal vouchers, their flights were constantly delayed instead of just being canceled. It really isn't a good look for Delta. Now, we all know it's not a good look for CrowdStrike. So if you were flying Delta that day and you were affected by this experience, please let us know in the comments or by shooting us an email what your experience was like. Were you treated well? Were you helped in finding new flights and getting home? Did you get meal vouchers? Did you get scoffed at, ignored, unable to get through customer service? We're very interested because this is a very unique situation where Delta and all the other airlines are probably going to try to pawn off their expenses on CrowdStrike. Meanwhile, CrowdStrike is going to continue to push back and try to point out the ways in which their customers were deficient. And so this is going to take a long time. It's probably going to be very expensive and long lasting in courts. And I'm very curious on how it's going to affect the consumers. Are these airlines going to pay out and cover these extra expenses while this is going on? Are they going to try to wait until it's resolved in court, pawn these expenses off on CrowdStrike? Who knows? So please write us or leave a comment with your experience. Ransomware is obviously a huge problem across corporations across the world, but I often forget that this can affect end users in their own homes as well. And so since July 20th, people have flooded forums with cries for help after their devices got locked up by Magnabur ransomware. This nasty piece of software encrypts your files and demands ransoms starting at $1,000, which can shoot up to $5,000 if you don't pay in three days. And so how does this happen? Well, the hackers are sneaky. They hide the ransomware in fake software updates, trojanized software cracks, and key generators. Sounds pretty innocent, but once you run these, boom, your files are encrypted and you're being hit with this ransom. And as I had mentioned before, I tend to forget that ransomware can affect individuals because, you know, the net worth of an individual is generally significantly less than a net worth of a company. And so these attackers tend to follow the money, right? But these individual ransomware instances are a result of automation. And I say that because it's very important to remember that if you can outsmart automated attacks, you will not be affected by this because $1,000 to $5,000 is not enough to cover an actual hacker gaining initial access to your devices. These are automated attacks. So what is an automated attack? Well, 
If your usernames and passwords are leaked on the dark web, those are going to be entered into all of your accounts looking for initial access, right? So one, change your passwords. But most importantly, enable multi-factor authentication. It's simple, it's free, and it is the best way to prevent this type of thing. Make it so that if someone has your username and someone has your password, they still can't get into your accounts without your code that lives on your device. And there are other ways of gaining access to your devices, such as using public Wi-Fi that's unsecured or less than secure websites where you enter in the credentials. You know, phishing is a really common one. Don't click any links. Don't enter in your passwords to anything you clicked on in an email. And try not to run any sketchy programs on your phone or on your computers, like illegal software cracking tools right? But there's an infinite number of things you can do, but don't be overwhelmed by that list. Just change your passwords, worry about multi-factor authentication, and think critically as you're navigating through the internet. All right, in that last story, we talked about a lot of methods you can take to prevent your personal devices from being infected by malware and ultimately exploited for ransoms. But this is a new one, all right? Hackers in China have compromised an internet service provider to deliver malicious software updates. This Chinese hacking group is called Storm Bamboo. And like I said, they compromised their ISP to poison DNS queries and push malware through fake software updates. And essentially with this story, there's nothing you can do as an end user. But if you're an ISP or if you're a cybersecurity professional protecting enterprises, it's important to know about this type of attack. These hackers targeted software with insecure update mechanisms, like those using HTTP without proper digital signature validation, and use those to embed their malware. And what type of malware are we talking about, all right? We're talking about MACMA for Macs and MGBot for Windows. So after compromising the systems, they even sneakily added a Google Chrome extension to steal browser cookies and send them to their own Google Drive. For people charged with monitoring networks, make sure to check out the article in our show notes and on our website for some things you can do. But if you're an end user, this hasn't been affecting Western ISPs, but you know, write an email, write a letter to your ISP and make sure they're aware that this is even possible and prompt them to check the way that they're sending out their updates or monitoring for this type of compromise. And finally, researchers have just found security flaws in Microsoft Windows Smart App Control, or SAC, and Smart Screen that could let hackers sneak into your systems like ninjas in the night. So the main purpose of SAC and Smart Screen is supposed to block malicious apps and websites. But they have some fundamental design weaknesses that threat actors can exploit. For starters, hackers can bypass these protections by using legitimate extended validation certificates. They can also use tactics like repurposing trusted apps to bypass the system, using innocent looking binaries to trigger malicious behavior, injecting code into legitimate apps without losing their good reputation, or exploiting Windows shortcut files to remove security tags before the checks. If you're a user of these features, if you're a Windows user specifically, don't rely on Windows Defender to catch malicious downloads. Scrutinize the things you do on the internet and keep listening to the Daily Decrypt for more tips and tricks to stay safe online. This has been The Daily Decrypt. If you found your key to unlocking the digital domain, show your support with a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It truly helps us stand at the frontier of cyber news. Don't forget to connect on Instagram or catch our episodes on YouTube. Until next time, keep your data safe and your curiosity alive.